Okay, to get started with my bo luck luck or shaking beef recipe, I am going to make a sauce. Here I have four tablespoons of oyster sauce. I'm also going to be using one and a half tablespoons of fish sauce, one and a half tablespoons of dark soy sauce. I'm also adding one tablespoon of sugar. Here I'm using natural sugar cane sugar. It's almost like turbinado sugar that I had to crush because I couldn't find my regular sugar. You could also use brown sugar. And here I have one and a half teaspoons of cracked black pepper. I'm actually going to add this later, not into the sauce. I'll also be adding to the sauce one tablespoon of hot water. That'll help me dissolve the sugar. Okay, so all I'm going to do next is combine the oyster sauce, fish sauce, dark soy sauce, and sugar, and a little bit of that hot water, and that's going to be the marinade slash sauce. And you can use part of this to marinate your beef and then set aside maybe one or two tablespoons to sort of drizzle over the finished product if you really want things saucy and flavorful. But I typically like to just pour it on the beef because there is a lot of sodium in this sauce, which is why you're probably not going to see me salt my beef. It's basically all the salt and sodium is in the sauce. So while I'm combining these ingredients, I just want to point out Growing up in the greater Houston area, there is a large Vietnamese community and there are no shortages of Vietnamese restaurants. And some of my favorite dishes to get here in Houston are Vietnamese. And Bo Lok Lok is one of my go-to dishes when I go eat Vietnamese food. Other than pho and spring rolls and even like the crunchy ones, there's so many wonderful dishes you can get at a Vietnamese restaurant that I love but this is definitely at the top of the list. So I've mixed the sauce slash marinade. So now I'm going to marinate my beef. Here I've cut up one and a half pounds of ribeye. To that I will be adding seven cloves of minced garlic. Now, I typically like to use this recipe with two pounds of ribeye, but I only had one and a half. So at this point, I'm going to pepper the beef because lots of pepper does go into this dish. And I'm going to reserve a little bit of the pepper just to finish it later. Now I'm going to add all seven minced cloves of fresh garlic. And I'll be honest, I love garlic. So seven cloves is nothing to me. But if you just don't want tons of garlic, you know, change the ratios of some of these ingredients. So now I'm going to pour in all of that marinade into the beef. By the way, it's going to look like there's a lot of this sauce left over once I start cooking the beef. And again, that's because this sauce, really I like to use it for around two to two and a half pounds of ribeye. But I only had two ribeye steaks to use that came out to about a pound and a half. But again, you can change some of the ratios of these sauces to your preference. So I'm going to give everything a good mix and I'm only going to marinate this for 30 minutes. Why only 30 minutes, you ask? Well, I find that that's all it takes <laughs> to get the flavor into this tender cut of meat, but you can take it longer if you like. So once I start to stir fry the beef, I'm going to add in some fresh scallions. I'm going to just cut them into like long one inch pieces. I have two stalks here. I'm also going to use one small red onion and I'm only going to use two of these tomatoes. These are two medium sized tomatoes and I'm not actually going to cook them thoroughly. It's just a flash saute, so I'll add them at the end. So here I have my little pan here that I just recently purchased. For those of you that always like some of the pans that I use, this is actually made in Turkey and it's like a nonstick granite type wok style. But anyways, I'm also going to be adding two to three tablespoons of beef tallow. You can add vegetable oil, you can add lard, use the oil of your choice. This is what I'm going with today. So now I'm going to add the beef tallow right into my preheated skillet. And I'm going to let that melt down and make sure the oil gets nice and hot and then it's time to cook. So once it has melted down, I'm just going to swish it around this skillet just to make sure that everything is coated with the oil or the fat. And then I'm going to start browning my marinated steak. Now, at this point, you'll want to cook your marinated beef to your desired doneness. And what I mean by that, I'm cooking ribeye steak. So steak, you want to, if you like medium rare or medium, 
with the pink in the middle, go for it. You probably want to cook it for like two minutes maybe to, to have pink on the inside, but my family likes it somewhere between medium well and well done. Honestly, my kid doesn't like to see any pink in the center, so I'm going to try to cook this well, but honestly, even when I try to overcook the meat to get it well, I still have pink in the middle. But if you really do want tender morsels of this marinated meat, do medium, medium rare. I, I wouldn't say rare, but basically it'll be nice and tender the less you cook it. My marinated beef is sizzling away and I'm going to cook this in batches as to not overcrowd the pan. And you'll notice I'm actually picking up chunks of beef and placing it in the pan. I'm not pouring it into the pan because I don't want tons of that marinating liquid to go into this. Trust me, the salt level from that marinade is enough. So again, you can change the ratios of that marinade to suit your needs, but you don't want to pour tons of liquid because you want it to sear. So now I'm just going to demonstrate why they call this shaking beef recipe because you shake around the pan that you're cooking it in. Honestly, I'll just use my tongs, but you get the point. <laughs> Once the second batch of meat is almost done, I'm going to go ahead and add my fresh ingredients. So here's how I've cut the red onion, the tomato, and the scallions. I've just left them kind of in big chunks, and I'm just sort of going to cook them not even a minute. I just want these to sear a little bit and warm through because the freshness is going to balance out the richness of this meat. Now, if you want to cook the onion and scallions and tomato a little further along, then you can do that. But I actually like to have a crunchy onion and the tomato to still stay firm and plump. I don't want to overcook them. So to finish this, I'm adding one tablespoon of unsalted butter right into the skillet. I'm going to let it melt and mix with whatever residual sauce is in the pan. And it's really going to add Definitely flavor, but it does add more body to that sauce that's at the bottom of this skillet, and that is it. I'm not going to cook it any further. Once this butter's melted, I'm just going to toss everything and coat it, and it's done. Now, I will say, I do have a little bit of extra cracked black pepper, so I am going to finish it with that pepper, but then it is done and time to serve. And I'm going to serve this with a very simple side of steamed rice, and I'm going to slice up some fresh cucumber and dress the cucumber in lime. And that is it. This is the perfect meal. I know it does take work, but in, in the end, the result is just fabulous. The flavors and the freshness and the richness and the saltiness and even the sweet and the tang, they balance so well. This is definitely one of my favorite Vietnamese style dishes. Okay, so I've plated this up and I wanted to show you. I have not even had a chance to serve dinner and this guy over here is eating whatever's left in the pan. Needless to say, he really loves this dish. So I hope you guys give this recipe a try. I hope you like it and thanks for watching.